So today I'm heading off to India with my wife and her parents for 25 days and it's perfect timing because it's just started snowing in Poland and it's freezing and muddy and a perfect time to leave in my opinion and randomly I just found an egg inside my car engine so that's something new Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, this is Django and I'm here in the beautiful state of Kerala in southern India with my beautiful wife Beata. We're here for a one month holiday and our parents have tagged along with us. So as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful here. I'll put the location of exactly where we are up on the screen. Very beautiful and very peaceful. That's awesome here. Everything seems chill, people are super friendly. So we're on our way to the beach, but we don't actually know where we're going. We've been told this road leads to the beach, so hopefully we make it. Oh, I think we're on the right path because my dad said go this way and then turn right. So I yeah. think that's the right. Okay. Oh, really? So we go yeah. right here? No, I think we already took right. Oh. Maybe. Okay. We'll just try. We'll go right or, or left. we we'll try left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be fine. So we've been in India for about a week now. We left Poland just in time because it started snowing and it became freezing cold there. And that's how we got sick here. Yeah, so we haven't been making videos the last weeks so much because we've both been really sick. But I still managed to get lots of footage. So in this video, I'm going to be going over what we've done for the last week, where we've been staying, how much things cost. We've been out on some boating trips in the backwaters and had some interesting adventures. Our trip started in, where was it? Kochi. We flew into Kochi. <laughs> so another thing I wanted to talk about quickly was our trip here, which did not quite go to plan. We actually got scammed out of about 600 euros which was about 120 euros or a bit more each. So what actually happened was we had a transit through Damam Airport in Saudi Arabia. And we researched before we got there that we didn't need a transit visa. In fact, it won't even let you get a transit visa if your layover is less than 14 hours or something like that. Uh, so we jumped off the plane. We had a short layover of about an hour and a half. We had our boarding passes ready for the next flight. And basically, as soon as we got off the plane, there were about 50 other tourists with us. And these Saudi guys ran out and they literally told every single person there that they were going to have to purchase a three-month Saudi visa for 120 euros or they weren't going to let anyone board their next flight. There was a huge queue of people. There was no way anyone was going to be able to get their visas in time for the next flight. These Saudi guys were absolutely heartless, horrible and racist, which I'll get into in a moment. Uh, people, they were all laughing at everyone's uh, misfortune and literally about six of the people, including the four of us, actually made it onto the next flight. There were people there saying they didn't have the money for the, the visas and I just don't know what happened to the rest of the people that needed to board the flight. They literally did not care. They were actually laughing at everyone and they were actually really enjoying it. And the racist part 
yeah, they kind of seem racist towards the tourists. But the worst thing about it was the way they were treating the Indian people. There were Indian people in the line with us when we were lining up to get to the visa and they literally like shouted at them and they're like, Indian people, get to the back of the line. And they were treating them like absolute crap. So if you're ever booking a flight, definitely avoid Damam Airport. It's literally the worst airport I've ever encountered in my whole life. And I would stay clear of it because they will make you buy a three months tourist visa if you arrive there. Yeah, and you mentioned it was 600 euro. Mm -hmm. But it was because we were traveling with parents, so it's like 120. Yeah, between it was like six, it was like 500 and yeah, it was 120 euro per person. Yeah, it was 120 euros per person, but that also made us miss our next flight, yeah. which made us miss our hotel booking and ended up costing us about 600 euros or more. And a huge amount of stress, we were running through the airports trying to make our connecting flights after that, and it was just a horrible experience overall. So, definitely avoid that airport. Yeah. Definitely. Not going there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Definitely never ever going to visit that country or transit it ever again. Hello. Hey, how are you? So before we arrived in India, we purchased a one month tourist visa and it only cost us around $25 and it's literally only around $10 in low season. You can also get a three month visa for around $40. You can get the visa easily online before you leave. After arriving at Kochi Airport, you're able to book a taxi straight from the airport counter, which guarantees you don't get overcharged. I think it only cost us around $12 for the 45 minute drive to our hotel in Kochi. You're also going to need a SIM card in India, so while you're at the airport, it's best to pick up a SIM card from Airtel. Unlike many other countries in Asia, such as Thailand, you don't have to worry about getting overcharged by picking up a SIM card at the airport. You can get a prepaid tourist SIM for around $8, which we got. It includes unlimited free calls, text messages, and two gigabytes of data per day, and lasts around 30 days, or $10 for the same deal with an additional 40 gigabytes of data to use over the 30 days. Our first impressions of Kochi were that it was much larger and busier than we'd imagined. Dense traffic and pretty hectic driving seems to be the norm there. We arrived at our budget four-star hotel which was called the Luminara. So here's what you can expect from a $17 per night four-star hotel in Kochi. This hotel was the only hotel we booked in advance for the entire trip and we decided before we left that we were simply going to wing it for the rest of the trip to keep things interesting. We decided that we were going to pick some random locations on the map before each hotel stay ran out and after seeing how many hotels are available in India we figured this shouldn't be an issue and so far it's been great doing it this way. The people of Kochi were beyond friendly possibly the most friendly people we've ever encountered on all of our trips. From the moment we arrived, we were treated with nothing but kindness, everyone wanting to say hello, wave, and the occasional selfie. Many people speak English at varying levels, and this makes it really easy to get around. Another one of the amazing things that took us by surprise in Kerala was the food. The food here is on another level, and on top of that, you can get an amazing feast at a mid-range restaurant for around $5 for two people, and much cheaper if you choose to delve into the amazing selection of street food or cheaper restaurants. Some meals literally cost us no more than a dollar per person. Overall, Kochi is an amazing place, safe and filled with amazingly friendly people that go out of their way to help you. In the next video, we'll be traveling from Kochi to Murari Beach, where we enjoy one of the best homestays we've ever had. We'll show you the amazing Murari Beach and the beautiful backwaters of Aleppi and much, much more. So please subscribe and hit the bell. The next video will be up in no time and thank you so much for watching.